Greatest trash talkers in tennis history. Everyone thinks tennis is all fun and games until things get very nasty. From hitting a kid to calling an official stupid to Serena Williams losing her head in game. These are 10 times when tennis players disrespect went too far. And for that, we'll be starting with a guy who took trash talking to a whole new level in tennis history. Fabio Fognini at number 10. But there was one instance where Fabio didn't only take things too far, he lost his mind. US Open 2018. Fognini had just lost his opening round match to Stefano Travaglia. Now losing hurts and nobody likes to lose but Stefano was such a sore loser that he decided to take out his frustration on someone else. And to be fair to Fognini, tennis can be a very emotional game. That's why players tend to get very expressive on the court. And in Fognini's case, it was his first game in a tournament that he'd been dreaming about all his life. So, losing it like that to Stefano Travaglia, Fognini went nuts. He couldn't take it, but rather than try to cool his anger, Fognini began to shout at the chair umpire and call her all sorts of names. Now if you know anything about tennis, you know you cannot disrespect the chair umpire in that way and get away with it. To make matters worse for Fognini, the microphone caught all the hurtful things he called the chair umpire. The tennis federation didn't have a tough decision to make. Fognini was immediately thrown out of the tournament, suspended from two Grand Slam tournaments, and slapped with a $92,000 fine for verbal aggression. Fognini accepted the ruling and promised to even behave himself. Well, at least Fognini apologized. The next person on our list did something worse and refused to apologize. And that guy was Fernando Verdasco. At number 9, back in 2018, eighth-time Spanish champion, Fernando Verdasco had a temper tantrum when a ball boy didn't hand him his towel fast enough. You see, Fernando was aware that fetching towels for players isn't part of a ball boy's job description. Yet, this didn't stop the Spanish player from aggressively insulting the ball boy. The poor kid didn't even understand English. Yelling at a kid? This dude literally took douchebag to a whole new level. Luckily for the poor kid, the umpire stepped in just in time to defend him. The incident went viral on Twitter, and many people were furious with Fernando. Scottish tennis coach Judy Murray even suggested a rule that would ask players to get their towels themselves in a quoted reply to the video. What about a rule that makes players get their own towels, and the ball kids just look after the tennis balls? Now Fernando Verdasco might have gone too far, but it's not as bad as completely ending an umpire's career. At number 8, Andy Roddick. This was back in 2008 at the Australian Open. It was a late-night game, and in tennis, you know that late-night tournaments bring out the worst tantrums in tennis players. On this particular night, Andy had been grinding it out for over four hours in the finals against Philip Kohlschreiber. He was exhausted, tired, and under a lot of pressure. So, when the umpire ruled out a shot against him, Andy lost it. Andy was sure he didn't hit the ball and demanded that the umpire, Emmanuel Joseph, gave him a reprieve, but the umpire did not budge. And that's when Andy completely went flying in rage. And just when you thought he was done, Roddick delivered the knockout punch with a timeless message for the kids. Stay in school, kids, or you'll end up being an umpire. Damn. Now, that was a violation. Andy's outrage was blockbuster, but this guy's disrespect made him a record breaker. At number 7, John McEnroe. Do you know what it means to be a record breaker for the wrong reasons? This story begins at the Australian Open in 1990. Tennis star John McEnroe was a man on a mission. The American was desperate to win his first major tournament since the 1984 US Open, and he wasn't going to allow anyone stand in his way, not even the officials. Now, if you happen to have watched McEnroe back in the day, you'd know that the American is the king of tantrums. The tennis superstar was famous for always arguing and cursing umpires and linesmen. However, on this particular occasion, McEnroe took things to a whole new level. During a changeover, McEnroe spotted a lineswoman he thought had made a bad call and made sure she knew how he felt. He first began by glaring at her with a look to kill, before going on to bounce on his racket like he was about to do something crazy. The chair umpire spotted this and gave McEnroe a con Conduct code violation for unsportsmanlike conduct, but McEnroe was just getting started. Less than 30 minutes later, he bagged another conduct code violation for racket abuse after smashing not one, but two rackets in a fit of rage. What happened next stunned the whole tennis world. Fueled by pure fury, McEnroe went on a profanity-laced rant, spewing out every curse word in the book for a solid four minutes straight. After witnessing that, the umpire realized he'd had enough. He called the third and final code violation, and McEnroe was disqualified from the Grand Slam for misconduct immediately. That day, McEnroe made history by becoming the first player in over 30 years to be disqualified from a Grand Slam for bad behavior. Getting the boot for trash-talking is crazy. But you know what's more crazy? Smacking a ball girl in the ear. Here is number 6, Tim Henman. 1955. 
British tennis legend Tim Henman paired up with doubles partner Jeremy Bates for Wimbledon. The two began well, winning the first round with ease. But when the second and third sets didn't go as planned, Henmom was furious. So, when Henmom lost a point in the fourth set, he allowed his inner demons get the better of him. Henmom took a ball out of his pocket, launched it into the air, before furiously hitting an innocent ball girl in the ear. The little girl burst into tears and, let's be honest, you can't blame her. Tennis players have very strong arms, and with that much force, Henmom would have easily killed her if the ball had hit her somewhere else. Henman tried to plead his case, saying it was an accident, but let's face it, the deed had been done. He should have thought about that before hitting the ball in the first place. Now you're probably thinking nothing gets lower than hitting a kid, right? Sorry, but you guessed wrong, because someone did something worse than that during the same tournament. At number 5. Jeff Tarango. It all started when the number 80 ranked player Jeff Tarango served what he thought was an ace, but the chair umpire wasn't having it, so he overruled it and called it a let. Tarango was pissed and began arguing with the umpire. Now, if it was anyone else, the crowd would have let it go or maybe even stood by Tarango, but Jeff already had a terrible reputation for being a jerk in the past. So when Tarango tried to serve again, the crowd began booing him. The American was boiling at this point, and so, in a moment of madness, he half turned to the crowd and did this. Can you believe this guy? The umpire of course wasn't going to let him get away with this, so he gave Tarango a code violation for his verbal abuse. Tarango felt the world was against him and if you've been in that position, you know that it's one of the worst things in the world, especially when you're playing a competitive match like this. But even with that, nothing could have prepared the crowd, the umpire or anyone else for what was about to happen next. After receiving his second code violation, Tarango packed his bags and walked off. The crowd and officials were stunned. That was the first time a player had ever walked off the court during a match in the tournament's 109-year history. Now you would think that would be the end of all the drama, right? You've guessed wrong again. After Tarango had stormed off the court, his wife Benedicte found the French umpire that Tarango a code violation in the alleys of the All England Club and delivered a slap that would make a WWE wrestler proud. Damn, Tarango was later banned from Wimbledon for life. Storming out of the court and slapping an umpire is unheard of, but what Serena Williams did in number 4 will make you shake your head in disbelief. At number 4, Serena Williams. She is without a doubt the greatest female tennis player to ever have played the game. But in 2009, the 21-time Grand Slam winner made the headlines for all the wrong reasons. It all started at the 2009 US Open. Serena was in the middle of a tough semi-final match, defending her US Open title, when a line judge called a foot fault against her. But Serena being Serena wasn't having it. She made sure the line judge had a piece of her mind, which quickly turned into a full-blown tantrum. In the heat of the moment, Serena threatened to shove the ball down the line judge's throat. Everyone including the line judge was shocked. It was the first time seeing Serena lose it completely like that. Anyways, Kleisters went on to win the championship, and Serena was slammed with an $82,500 fine for her verbal assault. Well, that's some serious amount of cash. But hey, when you're a millionaire, that's nothing, right? Serena got away with it and didn't even apologize for it. She even told reporters that she didn't regret a thing. And she meant it, because just three years later, Serena was caught doing the same thing. And because she'd gotten away with the first one, this time, she decided to take things a little too far. At number three, as well Serena Williams, the drama began to unfold when chair umpire Eva Azdaraki called Serena out for hindering. This was after the number one female tennis star shouted, come on, before her opponent, Sam Stosser, had touched the ball. Serena was confused and so irritated with the call that she threw a tantrum for the ages. The match went on, but Serena did not forget about the call or the chair umpire. So, during the changeover, Serena made sure the chair umpire had a bite of how she felt, saying, We were in America last time I checked, she hissed at Azdaraki. Don't look at me. If we're ever walking down the street, stay on the other side. You're totally out of control. You're a hater and you're unattractive inside. What a loser. Okay, what did you think about that? Did the chair umpire make a wrong call and do you think Serena went a bit too far with her choice of words? Anyway, Serena was fined $2,000 for verbal abuse and that was the end to it. Serena might have taken things far, but when it comes to bad attitude, no one does it quite like Martina Hingis. At number 2. This was back in 1999. Five-time Grand Slam winner Martina Hingis was crushing it in the French Open final against the legendary Steffi Graf. But things took a nasty turn when Hingis got into a heated argument with the umpire over a call. 
She was so worked up that she stormed over to Graf's side of the net, still complaining and refusing to play until she could speak to a tournament official. Hingis was eventually hit with a point penalty, and the match slipped away from her grasp. Graf went on to win her 22nd and final Grand Slam title. For Martina, she never tasted victory again until she finally retired in 2017. Do you think she'll react the same way again, if she could go back in time to that moment? And at number 1? You can trust that we'd save the best for last. Because nothing is as nasty as the 1983 Michelob Light Challenge between John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. The match had more ups and downs than a roller coaster, with both players racking up violations like they were trying to win some sort of bad behavior contest. From code violations to point penalties, these guys were determined to give the officials a run for their money. Tension continued to rise until the fifth set, but it was at this point that Connors had finally had enough of McEnroe's stalling tactics. What happened next was simply a blockbuster. In a fit of rage, Connors stormed across the net, pointing a finger in McEnroe's face and threatening to break out the boxing gloves. It was like watching a scene from one of those action blockbusters, except with more racket swinging and fewer sweaty, muscular men. McEnroe was never one to back down from a fight, so it was no surprise when smacked Connors finger away and sarcastically asked if he was going to beat him up. Thankfully, the officials intervened before the tennis court turned into a boxing ring. But that moment will forever remain one of the most dramatic and unforgettable moments in tennis history. Because even years after retiring, these two tennis legends refuse to see eye to eye. The game of tennis is all fun, but if we're to be real, it's these dramas that help spice the game up sometimes and keep us coming back for more. So what was your favorite moment? Do you have anyone you thought you'd find on the list? Drop the details in the comment section and we'll reply right back.